along comes this therapy called deep brain reorienting, which I first completely dismiss. And I dismiss it on the grounds that neurofeedback gets dismissed by everybody else. I ignored this for two years um, with, with Lanius had invited me to meet uh, with the author of this uh, deep brain reorienting, a man named Frank Corrigan, a psychiatrist in, in uh, Scotland. I regret that decision and because in the meantime, a friend of mine about a year ago, a friend of mine was saying, I'm getting results uh, with therapy that I've only heard people get when you talk about neurofeedback. So she, yeah, she's got my attention, right? One of the advantages of DBR is that, that it's a brain-based therapy. What happens is that there's the attachment shock is held in the superior colliculus, which is a brainstem structure. Quickly, it, it goes into the PAG, the periaqueductal gray, which gives it an affective tone. And there are different uh, sections of the PAG that give it different affective tones. So it depends on what part of the PAG gets activated as to what you're going to feel. Anywhere from terror, fight, flight, into a complete emotional shutdown. That begins in the brainstem, not at the amygdala. The, the PAG's information is transferred to the amygdala. So the amygdala, what we are looking at and thinking about is amygdala activation has begun in the brainstem, right? The therapy is about mediating this exchange between the superior colliculus and the periaqueductal gray. Many of the patients that Frank work, works with and that I work with have dissociative disorders or have had dissociative disorders. All of that is eased considerably by neurofeedback because I think we are getting to this effect, but we're not getting to the file itself. That's outside the realm of neurofeedback. What I discovered many years ago for myself was how vital neurofeedback was to affect regulation. There's nothing that's changed about that in my mind. That feels core to both the attachment rupture that is now seen as fundamental to developmental trauma and to anything that happens as a result often of the attachment rupture, which is abuse, physical, emotional, or sexual that isn't addressed in childhood by an empathic parent. Developmental trauma has really been understood now. The fundamental issue is the attachment rupture. That makes, or, or the failure of attachment, that makes the ability to regulate affect nearly impossible. So what I'm going to be doing is talking about recent research on, on the attachment profile that leads to what we think of as developmental trauma, attachment shock. And we're going to be looking in this webinar and what that means, where that happens in the brain, and what that means for neurofeedback. What I think it means is that we want to figure out how to ease the affective burden at the brainstem. So we need to get closer to the brainstem. And we've been looking for where that is. So is that the Indian Ridge? It could be the medulla. So what we're looking at is a, is, is a part of the, uh, that goes all through the brainstem, but the reticular activating system is a system that begins in the lower brainstem, the medulla, goes through the pons and, and goes into the midbrain. So if we train at the Indian Ridge, we're probably getting to the medulla. When we think about a possibly profound treatment, for developmental trauma, I'm thinking about training with DBR and with neurofeedback, figuring out what frequencies, how much the brainstem can tolerate training, what different frequencies, they're typically, what we've seen so far is pretty low, pretty short epics, and we're only talking about three minutes. 
If we really had a gold standard treatment of three minutes and even a limited, possibly limited run before the brainstem learns it, right? We have the room for therapy. We have the time and the hour to also engage in therapy. So we have time to do DBR and to do any regular talking that people need to do, right? It's got huge promise. And that's what I want to be discussing in this webinar.